Okay, the topic uh, that I'm going to deal with today is uh, in the form of a question. Is Jesus Christ God? And that is the question that I will be addressing today. And of course, I answer in the affirmative, yes. And I will prove through the scriptures that Jesus Christ is in fact deity, divinity, however you want to say it, Jesus Christ is God. And I will be uh, starting out, I'm, I'm going to take a look at uh, the Gospel of John and the testimony of John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist, he was the son of Zacharias. He was a Jewish high priest. And Zacharias received a promise from the angel Gabriel that uh, his wife Elizabeth would have a child and the child's name would be John. And this is the John the Baptist that I speak to you today about and this is his testimony and we know that John the Baptist was the one who prepared the way for Jesus Christ in this particular passage of scripture John was approached by uh, some people who were sent of the Pharisees which was the religious group of Jewish people of that day and uh, they wanted to know who he was and I'll pick it up uh, verse 22 in John chapter 1 they then said they unto him who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us what sayest thou of thyself he said I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord as said the prophet Isaiah that means Isaiah and they which were sent were of the Pharisees. So the Pharisees, they inquired, they wanted to know who John the Baptist uh, was. Uh, some of them thought perhaps he might be the promised Messiah. They knew the scriptures, they, they, they knew the Old Testament, so uh, the timing was right. So they were questioning John as to who he was. Some thought he was a prophet. And John responded, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. And he said, Isaiah the prophet was the one uh, who declared this. And what John was doing, he was re referring to uh, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3. I'm going to read that to you now. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So John identified himself as that voice. This is the voice that Isaiah the prophet speaks about here. And we notice that the voice had a message. And the message was prepare ye the way of the Lord. The word Lord in the Hebrew, uh, you'll find the letters Y-H-W-H. Sometimes it's pronounced Yahweh. And the word for God is the Hebrew word Elohim. So the message that was coming forth from this voice, obviously a voice represents a person, uh, the voice of a person. The message of that voice is prepare ye the way for Yahweh Elohim. Given the fact that we know that John the Baptist was the one who was sent to prepare the way for Jesus Christ, we can say undoubtedly and without question that John the Baptist prepared the way for Yahweh Elohim, who is Jesus Christ. This is one of the clearest uh, scriptures, proof text in the Bible regarding the deity or divinity of Jesus Christ. So we can most certainly say that applies to Jesus Christ that he is in fact God. Now in that same uh, Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 29 it says the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said after me cometh a man which is preferred before me for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. So John makes a statement here concerning Christ. He says, 
there's coming somebody after me, but he was he's preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, in the natural, if you study the scriptures, you will see that John the Baptist was born prior or before Jesus Christ was born in the flesh. But here he's declaring that Jesus Christ was before him. In other words, he existed before him. He he uh Basically, John is speaking in the spirit. He knows that the one who he was preparing the way for is, in fact, eternal. And there can be no other explanation. If you look in Luke chapter 1, verse 34 to 37, that same angel Gabriel that appeared to uh, Zacharias, the Jewish high priest, in the course of his duties, is the very same Gabriel that appeared to Mary. Okay? And in, uh, in his conversation... With Mary, he made it known unto her that Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, was pregnant. At that point in time, she was pregnant with John. John was in her womb, so he clearly was born prior to Jesus Christ. So it's very interesting that we find out that John, this very same John, knew he was preparing the way for somebody who existed before him a better way of putting it he's eternal and uh john knew that in the spirit he knew that so that's a very clear proof text in the bible regarding the deity of jesus christ now let's take a look now at the testimony of jesus christ himself now in john chapter 8 uh, i'll read it to you john eight fifty six, verse uh 56 through 59 Jesus speaking, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So here we, we have a similar uh, type of statement being made. Jesus is uh, declaring himself to be the I am. And basically he's saying before Abraham was I am. In other words, here's Jesus on the scene. Uh, his exact age at the point is not given. And, but the Jewish people recognize that he was not 50 years old yet. And he's speaking of a man, Abraham, one of the fathers of the faith. And, and he's telling them that, that he existed, or he was, before them. In other words, he was living before them. How could this possibly be? And, and that's what they did not understand. And Jesus now identifies himself as the I Am. And we're going to now take a look uh, as to where that term comes from. What does this mean, I Am? If you take a look, uh, in the book of Exodus, the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, I'll read it to you. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So, uh, God speaks to Moses and he says, this is what you need to tell him. You just tell him, I am has, has sent me, has sent uh, you know, me unto you. That's, that's what I want you to tell them. So the name I am is a name that is associated with God. Now, let me also from that same book of Exodus, same chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. This is God speaking out of the bush. I want to make this point here. And prove the point that this is God talking. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. 
Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So clearly, it is God who is speaking out of that bush. So I want you to see that Jesus Christ was identifying himself with that name, I am. Basically, he's telling them he's deity. Before Abraham was, I am, was the statement that the Lord Jesus Christ made to the religious people of his day, the Jewish religious people. Now, if you go back to that scripture where Jesus makes that statement in John chapter 8, after he makes the statement, the scripture says, Then took they up stones to cast at him. Now, the purpose of that, you see, the Jewish people knew the scriptures. Leviticus chapter 24 and 16, let me read it to you. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well the stranger as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. So the reason that they took up stones and they wanted to stone Jesus. Now, keep in mind he hid himself, so they, they, they did not succeed. But the purpose of that was because they thought that he was guilty of blasphemy. There's no question about it. They were very well aware of that name I am. That is the very reason that they went to kill him. They wanted to stone him to death. Jesus knew what he was saying when he made that claim, when he used those words, I am. There can be no other meaning. The fact that he says he existed, that he was uh, before Abraham. He says, before Abraham was, I am. He's making a statement that he's deity, that he's eternal. And that's the very point that he made, and that is the very reason that they took up stone. So I want you to see that. There'll be those that would even dispute that. But you, you can uh, go to that scripture, Leviticus 24, verse 16, to... Uh, see for yourself and I encourage you to write these scriptures down so another clear cut scripture as to the deity of Jesus Christ uh, if you go now let's fast forward to the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 17 and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and of death that's Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 and 18 this is the Lord Jesus Christ he's revealing himself to the to the Apostle John he's the same John who wrote the Gospel of John uh, this is a book that was written by him so here he says, he identifies himself as the first and the last. Then he says, I am he that liveth. He lives, he's alive, and was dead. So here we find out that the first and the last at one point was dead. And then he says, behold, I am alive forevermore. Now let's see where we get this title first and last from. If you go back to Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 6 it reads as follows thus saith the lord the king of israel and his redeemer the lord of hosts i am the first and i am the last and beside me there is no god so here we have the first and the last clearly a title that the Lord says is his. Thus saith the Lord. Remember that. He said, I am the first and I am the last. Then listen what he says. And beside me, there is no God. So important for you to remember, there can only be one first and the last. There are not several first and last. So the first and the last, clearly a title belongs to the Lord and he says beside me 
There is no God. Speaking of the same person. So we can say without doubt that Jesus Christ is God because the scriptures declare the first and the last to be God, to be the Lord. So I want you to see that. Now, as you uh, stay in that same first chapter of the book of Revelation, if you take a look at verse 11, chapter 1, we'll find out in that verse, we, we see the words, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Now we see the first and the last is also the Alpha and Omega. Now go back to verse 8 in that same chapter, Revelation 1, 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Okay, we know the Alpha and Omega is also the first and the last. We've shown it to be Jesus Christ through the scriptures. And by this verse, we see the Alpha and the Omega is also called the Almighty. Very often you'll meet those people, uh, perhaps they may be in a cult, and they will confront you with the fact that Jesus Christ is never called God. He's never called Almighty. You can use this verse to prove them wrong. They'll tell you he's, he's called a mighty God, but he's not called Almighty. Right here in this verse, remember Revelation 1.8, in that whole chapter 1, we, we are seeing all these uh, proof texts uh, regarding the deity of Jesus Christ. So we have seen so far in this first chapter of Revelation, we've learned that Jesus Christ is the first and the last. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the Almighty. He's the one who was dead but is now alive forevermore. He's the one who holds the keys of hell and death. And he is the one which is, which was, and which is to come. See, it's a good thing to study the scriptures this way, uh, just for your own edification, because it will encourage you, it will build up your faith that the, that the Jesus that you serve is the real deal. Other scriptures from Revelation uh, chapter 2, verse 8, you can also find that the first and the last is the one who was dead and is alive. Revelation 22, 12 to 13, uh, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So we see the one who will be doing the judging is also Jesus Christ. And I can't recall a scripture, but there's another scripture that tells us uh, that all judgment has been given into his hands. Uh, right now, I'd like to prove the point that Jesus Christ is also the creator. If you look at John chapter 1 and verses 1 through 3, reads as follows. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So we see uh, the Word is the one who uh, made all things. And who is this Word? We find it out to be Christ, Jesus Christ, as we go down in the same chapter, verses 14 through 17. Listen, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I know I'm giving you a lot of scriptures. There are certain times I'll give you references later in a study, but there, there are uh, certain scripture passages I, I believe that need to be read. Because very often people will take a look at a reference but they never look up the reference for themselves. So I want to give you the most important ones and read them to you word for word. So we see that Jesus Christ 
is said to be the creator according to the scriptures. Genesis 1.1 tells us, very first verse in the Bible, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Who created the heaven and the earth? God. So uh, another text that would prove that Christ is God because we've already seen that the scriptures declare that he made uh, all things. And if you look at Genesis uh, chapter 1, same chapter, verses 26 to 27, look at that for yourself. You'll find out that God said, let us make man in our image, using the plural, us and our, okay? You say to yourself, who is he talking to? So he's talking to somebody here saying, let us make man in our image. So further down, we see God created man in his own image. We know that man was made in the image of God. I, I bring the scripture to you today because... Uh, there will be those who tell you that God first created Jesus and then uh, used, used Jesus later on to create the rest of uh, the things. But this tells us that God created man in his own image. And, and let's look now at Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24, to refute that uh, attack against the deity of Christ as to being creator. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. So in that one verse, you're able to refute that attack against uh, Christ uh, as being eternal, as, as Christ being the creator. Why? Because that verse tells us the Lord made all things, that he did it alone and he did it by myself. So Jesus is not less. Amen. Jesus Christ was there at the beginning, as the Gospel of John tells us, as Genesis tells us. And we also find in Hebrews chapter 1, and we find verses 8 through 10 tell us the following. But unto the Son... He saith, this is the Father talking, but unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hand. So here we have the Father referring to the Son as God. So uh, these are scriptures, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that you can use to prove the deity, the divinity of Jesus Christ. And these are scriptures that I have used often on the streets. Uh, you know, when I lived in New York, I used it often on the streets. And on the subways, as I would uh, uh, sometimes be confronted by people, and I'm here to tell you that this word of God is effective, and and it's it's, it's you learn by experience, and I have learned through experience as people would bring certain things, especially as a new Christians. Uh, we, we get confronted by people and sometimes if we do not know the word of God, we're new to the Bible, we're not quite sure where to find certain scriptures. That is the purpose of this Bible study today. That is my motive, to, to encourage you, to edify you, to help you be a better witness for Christ. And if perhaps uh, you're not a Christian, uh, the purpose would then be to, to prove to you that you need Jesus Christ. Amen. So right now, I would like to take a look at some of the works of Jesus Christ. And what I will be doing here, I will give you the, the reference with the main point because otherwise we could go on for hours. And uh, for the sake of time, uh, I'll just give you uh, references. Uh, regarding the works of Christ, Jesus Christ cast devils or demons out of many people. In Luke 4, chapter 4, verse 31 to 36, we, we find Christ casting a demon out of a man in the synagogue. So the man was uh, at a service, and uh, the demon in that man recognized Christ immediately, even called him the Holy One of God. And uh, Jesus is able to cast out demons, and that's what I, what I want to prove to you here. Luke 4, chapter 41, Jesus cast demons out of many. 
Mark 5, verses 1 through 20, you'll, you'll find the account where Jesus cast a legion of demons out of a man. He was possessed by many demons. In fact, they, uh, they requested that they could enter into a, a herd, a large herd uh, of swine, pigs. And Jesus allowed it, and the demons left that man, went into the swine, and a whole herd of swine went charging down into the sea drowning themselves showing us the destructive power of demons in mark chapter 4 verse 35 41 changing the topic now jesus commanded mother nature to obey him i use those words mother nature you often hear them on the radio jesus commanded mother nature to obey him and in that account we find that the lord was on the sea with his disciples and it was a great storm that arose and the, the the boat that they were in was filling with water it was it was about to capsize and and they uh they find jesus fast asleep and they awake him and, and they were concerned that they were going to perish and jesus with three words peace be still rebuke the wind rebuke that storm and immediately there was a great calm. And it caused the disciples. Uh, if you look at verse 41 in chapter 4, it says, And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? What manner of man is this indeed? That was a reaction uh, that we would have had if, if you saw somebody stand up and rebuke a, a, a storm you'd be saying the same thing and and the, the point I make here today as we go through this study is that Jesus Christ was more than a man that Jesus Christ is more than a prophet as some would declare uh, like uh, the people who are of the uh, Islam religion they believe Jesus Christ uh, to be a prophet they'll give him that much but they do not believe that he is deity divinity or God they do not believe this uh, they, they, they teach that God doesn't even have a son so the point I make here today is that Jesus Christ is God I want you to uh, know that that is what is being uh, spoken here today by me that is my uh, my stance in this Bible study and we are proving it through the scriptures because otherwise uh, it would be merely my own opinion it would be my opinion against your opinion or uh, perhaps somebody else's opinion but the point that I make here today is that I am proving through the Word of God I am proving through the scriptures that Jesus Christ is in fact God Jesus also raised the dead Luke 7 uh, 11 to 17 he raised a young man uh, that was being carried in a funeral procession from the dead John 11 39 to 45 is the passage that speaks about how Jesus raised a man named Lazarus from the dead a man that was dead for four days truly truly incredible uh, story how that man came back to life and Jesus, we find, healed all sorts of diseases. Mark 7.33, he healed a deaf and a dumb man. Mark 8.23, he healed a blind man. Matthew 8.14, he healed Peter's mother-in-law, uh, which uh, we could do a Bible study on that. Peter obviously was married. Uh, Matthew 9.23, Two, Jesus healed the paralyzed man. Luke 17 and 12, Jesus healed 10 lepers. Jesus also forgave people of their sins. And, and, and we know in the Bible we find uh, when he did that, people were upset. They said only God can forgive sins. Who, who, who but God can forgive sins? And, and we find uh, Jesus healed. He forgave sins also. So uh, another testimony to his deity. Um, uh, John 9, 35 to 38, we find a blind man worshiping Jesus just one of many instances in the word of God where uh, Jesus is found to be worshipped if, if you do a study on, 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 on the Greek word if I'm correct I think it's proskuneo uh, 
You can see it's the same word that's used in the worship of God. So Jesus uh, received worship. And keep in mind that Jesus knew full well that only God deserved glory. So if, if, if he accepted the worship, that's another proof of his deity. Otherwise, he would have rebuked the persons, uh, the people who would offer him worship. But he never did that. He did not do that. So... Jesus knew the scriptures inside out. He knew the commandments. He knew that there's only one God, yet he never refused worship. So a quick review as to what we've learned so far. We, we, we started off with John the Baptist. We proved that he prepared the way of uh, Yahweh Elohim. We know that he prepared the way for Jesus Christ. So we tied the two together, proving Christ to be Yahweh Elohim. We, we studied and we saw that Jesus claimed to be the I am, the same I am that spoke out of the burning bush uh, to Moses. So we, we found out that the one speaking out of the bush was God. So we, we tied that together, proving Jesus Christ is God. We studied and found out that Jesus is the first and the last. We went back to Isaiah chapter 44 and we found out that the Lord uh, used that title for himself declared that there were no other gods beside him so we use that to prove the deity of Jesus Christ we found in the book of Revelation also that he was the Alpha and Omega and also the Almighty we tied those two together we, we found uh, that he would be the one who would judge us Revelation 22 12 to 13 we know that he was the one who was dead is now alive forevermore we have proven Christ to be the creator of all things we went to John chapter 1 Genesis 1 we then went to Hebrews 1 and back to Isaiah 44 to prove that he did it alone uh, by himself and then he made all things so over and over we see through the use of the scriptures that it has been proven clearly and without a doubt that Jesus Christ is God I'd like to close with this passage now of scripture from John chapter 20 verses 25 to 31. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, be and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Very quick synopsis of what I just read. The Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. The Lamb of God died for our sins, as John the Baptist said. The Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Crucified, he rose from the dead. He got up and he had made many appearances to his disciples. And Thomas doubted the other disciples because he had not seen him yet. And then Jesus came, came into this room without opening the door. And he called Thomas over and he said, Thomas, look at the holes in my hands. Stick your finger in there. Thomas, look, look, at, the, look at my side. Thrust your, thrust your hand into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And, and, and Thomas, the response of Thomas was, he declared this, he said, My Lord and my God. Thomas recognized Jesus Christ to be his Lord. And he recognized Jesus Christ 
to be his God. And the promise given here is that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. The word Christ means Messiah. So that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you might have life through his name. That speaks of everlasting life. And, and, and that's the gospel in a nutshell. Christ has risen from the dead. The blood that he shed on that cross was for you. Paul the Apostle, at one time an unbeliever, a persecutor of Christians, wrote to the Romans in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath. Through him. That is a promise to all who believe. You have heard the word of God. We've answered the question through the use of the scriptures. The question being, is Jesus Christ God? And I answer once again in the affirmative. And if you don't know him today, the word for you today is don't put it off because we're not promised even another day. Even the breath that we breathe is on loan to us.